With cords. There are a few theorems, okay? We're not going to prove any of these theorems. We're just, just going to have to accept them for right now, okay? But we could if we want to. Um, in the same circle, or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent, okay? So if you have two chords that are congruent, we talk about chords, they're segments whose endpoints are on a circle. So if they're congruent, that means that their arcs are also congruent. So that means that AB and BC are congruent to each other. Does everybody understand that? They're the same measurement. Uh, same length? Yeah. Me? Yeah. If the diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a core, perpendicular means what? 90 degrees. Then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. Bisect means what? Split in half, and what's special about those halves? They're equal. So if a, um, a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, that means that these two segments are equal, and the chords themselves are equal as well. Okay? Uh huh. Chord? No. Uh, DE is a chord, and FE are a chord. DG is an arc, and GF is an arc. So the chords and their arcs are congruent. And then vice versa, if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another, then you know that one of those chords is a diameter. So if they give you that these two chords are equal and that this is 90 degrees, if that center dot wasn't given to you, you would know, based off of this theorem, that JK is a diameter. Wait, so the right angle has to be given to you? Yes, it has to be congruent segments and the right angle. What is the chord you Then we cannot make that assumption that that is a needed diameter. It would have to be perpendicular. Okay? One more, and then we're going to look at some examples. It's a lot of stuff to remember. I see some of you guys zoning out. When we get to those examples, you're going to be like, wait, how is that true? Okay, so please make sure you're paying attention. The last one, in the same circle or congruent circles, Two chords are congruent if and only if they're equidistant from the center. Equidistant means what? Equally distant. Equal distances. So if EF is congruent to EG, then we know that those chords of AB and CD are congruent. That's what that means, okay? So if those two segments are congruent, they're equal distances from the center, then you know that those two cores are congruent. And if those two cores are congruent, what else do we know? The arcs are the same. The arcs are the same as well. Okay, so if two cores are congruent, then we also know their arcs are the same as well. Okay? So four theorems that relate to the arcs, I mean, relate to the cores. Wait, so those two arcs are congruent? Yes, because the two cores will be congruent. Oh. And the reason why the two cores are congruent is because they're equidistant from the center. So let's look at some examples. We're not going to do the patty paper thing. We're going to look straight at the examples. It says find the measure of arc E D. So E D has to find its measure. Say again. Uh, now, how did you know that? Because uh -huh. Very good. ED and CD are called what? Chords. And if chords are congruent, that means their arcs are congruent. So, how do I call for X? Subtract the x. Subtract the x, so that gives me 3x equals 78. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 26. Is that my answer? No. No. I'm looking for the measure of the arc, so what do I have to do? So what is 4 times 26? What? 104. 104. Two letters. Less than 180, right? One way you check yourself. Over here it says that 80 is 40. So A to D is 40, C to D is 25. <coughs> Find the measure of 
find C, G. Pythagorean theorem? Pythagorean theorem? How do you always say that? Well, I mean, he's, I mean, he's on it. He can recognize it. Wait, what? Divide 40 by 2. 20 Divide 40 by 2. This one has to be 20. And if you find CF, it's going to be congruent to CG. So, yes, Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Work it out. Find me CF, which will give me CG. Okay, so you should have set it up like that. That's 400 plus CF squared equals 625. Subtract CF squared equals 225. So then the square root of that would have been 15. So CG is 15. Is it possible for it to be a decimal? No, it's very possible to be a, um, a decimal. But we just know that this triangle is called a what? Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple. They're all whole numbers. Okay? Let's keep looking. Uh, we did this one. All right. <clears throat> Find the measure of arc M N. From the yep. center or oh, just get your right side. Can I use the whole central angle thing? No, no. no why not? Not center. Because it's not at the center. Okay. But I do know that my diameter is perpendicular to a chord. And my diameter is perpendicular to a chord, what does that mean? The chords are congruent because it's a bisector. And if this is congruent, what about the arcs? They're congruent. So if RP is 74, PN is? So that kind of helps me out a little bit to find MN. Oh, and now it's just 180 minus 74. Now 180, how do you get 106? You, you no. subtract it from 360. You subtract these two angles from 360. Since it doesn't go through the center, it's not cutting the circle in half. So it, doesn't, it doesn't go through the center? Because mm -hmm. C is the... Oh, you're point. right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Uh, so 212. Divide by 2. And then you divide by 2. It's still 106. It's still 106? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that works out. Will it always work out that way? No. no. So let's not assume. So wait, how did you guys do 106? You divide by 2. No, no, no. How did wait. they get 106 using the 180 and not the 360? Uh, because 180 is just because the numbers aren't like. Yeah, they're not too corresponding with the size of the right. circle. They, they did 180 minus 74. And it just so happened that it ended up being the same. It will not work out and that way every time. If you want to try, by all means, go ahead. Go ahead, and I'll be ready with my pen. Two minus one. Okay? So you can only do it when you get the middle. Yes. Over here. I'm going to find an image for number 14. Double 147 subtract 360. Very good. Why do, why do I need a double 147? Because that is all the way from the top point. That's just that one side. One angle. Because the arc is really Yes. And you know that because? Uh, of course, you can grow. So, 360 minus 147 minus 147 is 66. Good stuff. Take a minute, figure out 15. Using what you know, you know it's 48. These two are congruent. 360 minus 264, because that's what those two sum up to be. And that is a 96. Divide both by two, and yes, MN is 48. Questions on cores in their arcs? Because when you put, you take a line through it, it usually cuts in half. True. Sure. Yeah. 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 It does in this case, since these are kind of like divided into equal parts. We're good? Yes. Ah, uh, because we already know that this segment, this segment already taken care of, so only this is with that little segment. And unlike this one, where we have two segments that are left over to equally have the remaining degrees. 
Last few. It says P is the center of the circle. Use the given information to find X, Y. And then explain your reasoning. Explain your reasoning. So you just got to justify why you say it is what it is. So Z, Y is 3. What's X, Y? 3. 3. They have congruent angles. Which mean what? The corners are congruent. But how do you know the cores are congruent? There's not, there's not a theorem that says that if the angles are congruent, the cores are congruent. There's a theorem that says if the angles are congruent, the arc is congruent. But so, if the arc is congruent, then the cores have to be congruent. Right, but you got to make sure you include that uh, arc <laughs> part first. So angles are congruent, which means that the arcs are congruent. Therefore, the cores are congruent. I've not said that therefore, Simon. Hang on. Mm -hmm. it looks like you're writing inside. I'm writing like Egyptian right now. Wait, what is the angle? So it says the angles are congruent, the arcs are congruent, therefore the cores are congruent. I knew that meant. I see. Oh, that's a comma. I see. Oh, if I can show trust me, I will show her hand. I see. I see angle equals unibrow equals sign over unibrow equals sign bowling ball. Let's look over here. I don't know bowling so long. We said bowling. I was like, bowling ball. Oh yeah, you stick your thumb in the two fingers. Z Y is six, and X W is four. Wait, yes. Can we do the theorem? Yep, we could do the theorem because if this is a ninety degree angle, you know this is ninety degrees right here. And if ZY is 6, what's ZW? 3. Two, three. three. I know XW is 4, so I can find XY by doing Pythagorean theorem. 9 plus 15 is 25. XY is 5. XY is 5. This is also one of your Pythagorean triples, so you, know, you can also look for that. You guys, work out 18, find XY. I need to find the length of XY, so take a minute, figure out XY. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so, how'd you get six? We'll see, oh, um, because I guess. AC is congruent to AC. CD is congruent to AC, so that's three. Chords are congruent, so very good. XY would have to be six. I thought we were trying to explain how XY plus five on the. Isn't that a good thing?